Alright guys, so in this video, we're pretty much going to talk about pacing, um, how to move really fast when you're versing really good players and not stand in the same spot. Uh, because you can still get a lot of kills and play smart, but if you're not finding enough people in the game or moving into certain spots fast enough, you're not going to get a lot of kills. And this is important even if you're trying to get like a new PR in regular rebirth or if you're playing ranked. Because if you do not kill enough players or get assists on enough players, you will not have a lot of SR. And once you start reaching in harder lobbies when the deployment fee is a lot higher, you're not going to be able to get really good games or you might still be in the negative because you're playing too safe in a smart way that's not going to be good for your growth and getting higher ranks and i will say too uh this is probably one of the number one things i struggled with with being uh, a good player right because i would always have like the other things down i can shoot i can do the side cancel i could do everything um but my pacing was so bad that even though i was a really good player i didn't know how to get tons of kills you know like like it did take me a while to get 30 kills in a game and then now i'm dropping 40 i dropped to 49 it's just getting higher and higher because my pacing is very good and some of you guys complain like oh you only get easy lobbies or the lobbies that i watch you're like these people are just so easy if you got the same exact lobby as i did you'd probably drop around 25 while i can drop a 40 in that lobby and it's all because of the pacing it doesn't even have to be with the skill there could be players right now who are watching who are better than me yet they can't drop more kills than me and that all has to do with the pacing the pacing is very important all right i try to make videos like this in the past and usually like the views do not go well right people don't like clicking on this video um but i think it's way more important than the other types of videos that i just made because a lot of people already have movement down they have aim down they've been playing this game for a long time and they just struggle with the pacing part it's very important and with that being said too um if you guys haven't watched the past few videos that i have been posting uh, i would say watch those videos and make sure you have all those things down before you watch this one because if you have really good pacing and you develop that but you're not great at the game because your aim isn't on point or your movement isn't perfect you are going to find more people but you're just going to keep dying because you're finding the people you just can't kill the people okay so once you master like all the fundamentals right you can aim very well you can do movement well um some of those advanced things that i talked about that are little things that can help you get more kills and just be smarter in the game once you have all of that down and you're ready to move on to the next level this is the video for you because it's going to talk about how to pace, how to get faster in this game, and how to be faster while killing people at the same time so that you're not dying, okay? Most people believe that you can't play fast and smart at the same time, all right? So maybe uh, if people were over there, right? First, I would take this head glitch. Okay, I'm using the head glitch. They're not over there. Maybe I can go over here. And then if I push those people, it would be bad because then I'd have to run out in the open like this, okay? So most people already have that mindset of... Uh, playing slow and not taking a risk okay you have to take a lot of risk in this game to be able to see people and be able to kill them all right and i will say too this is a habit that a lot of people have it's something that they develop over maybe other games too like maybe rainbow six siege i played that a lot where you have to play slower especially if you're on the defense side if you're on offense you can still like push and use like your equipment and stuff but you have to play a little bit slower you can't just rush everything because that wouldn't be the smartest thing to do okay this game is a little different there are some things in this game that makes uh the person who was aggressive and they have the person who was aggressive they always have the advantage in this game compared to some other games that might be slower okay so being aggressive is good and that's also great because if you're constantly moving you're going to be able to see more people and then have an advantage on top of that right so uh throughout this video we do got to help break your habit of being safe and slow and holding angles and more of like a pushing person to get more kills now i think it was my movement video i talked about there's a lot of times where you need to be moving cover to cover right so i'm in cover to cover like this i'm not just like okay i'm just gonna move just to side cancel and get to the location i'm going to go cover to cover where i at least have a place to fall back on so if i'm just like running over here and someone shoots Boom, I can go over here. I'm not caught out in the open and have no idea what I'm doing, all right? Uh, this is going to be like your foundation of your pacing, 
okay because as you're moving very fast as you're trying to get to as many people as possible across the map even if they're crimson players eerie players top 250 players uh if you have that basic line of okay i could fall back here or i'm going from cover to cover like this you're gonna be very safe from getting shot nobody's gonna one shot you or melt you if you're going to cover and cover and cover to cover in small places like this okay so you want to make sure that you prioritize that around the map as you're doing the pacing uh, and making sure that you have that down so that you don't get knocked off guard or killed. So as you keep that in mind of just moving cover to cover and making sure that your movement is fast and you're also getting to certain areas in time, there are a few things that you also want to make sure you have. All right, so the first thing uh, is pretty obvious is do you have a good weapon? So if I have a, a loadout box, right, I get a loadout crate, open it, have my whole loadout, and I know every single person on the map, they have pistols or they're getting starter weapons, I am rushing every single person that I possibly can because I have the better gun with the faster time to kill, and then that just makes the pacing so, mu so much easier because all I have to do is just rush people super fast like that okay and it is a little trickier as the match goes on when everybody has their loadout all right so first is do you have the best weapons or better weapons than other people okay that's going to determine how fast that you need to be uh when you are pushing teams the next thing you want to focus on is having good rotation so depending where you are uh is it a good rotation to actually go towards a place so just taking this private match for an example, uh, it would be a bad rotation if I just went straight over here, even if I have the best weapons, because if somebody slide cancels right there, they can kill me pretty fast, okay? I can either rotate around, because it might be a more common area if people were over here, and then maybe AR this right there, or if I wanted to push that same spot, okay, well, maybe I can rotate into the building and then pop out right here so that even though I have the better weapon, I'm still closing the distance so that their weapon is not as effective as my weapon. Okay, so you want to uh, you want to keep track of the rotations you're using and don't do something that's that's not <laughs> that's going to leave you out in the open. Okay, I'm not going to run across an entire field uh, or maybe like the entire rooftop in prison. Right. Even though I have the better weapons when there's a whole team stacking on top of there with assault rifles, I'm going to die there. Okay, so keep track of the weapon you have, keep track of the rotations that you do run in this game, and also just keep in mind like the probability that enemies will be in certain locations. All right, so if I'm in headquarters, prison, control center, most likely there's going to be a lot of people there. Okay, and that is where I'm going to have to be prepared to, you know, jump back into a cover maybe like drop shot peek to see if people are there i'm going to be more careful in those areas when i'm fighting people than if i was in somewhere like factory okay there might be a lot of people who go to factory often but usually factory has like four different levels and it's really easy to avoid shots there so if i'm going there i don't have as much of a focus on awareness as if i was someplace like control center all right, control center, you can just go up and down super fast on the different floors. And then factory, there's a lot of long stairs. There's uh, bunches of doors and stuff. It's more spaced out so that uh, you could focus more on just rushing that place and maybe take your time a little bit more with control center. All right, hope that makes sense. Now, as you're going around the map, uh, the two main things that you want to focus on when you are trying to find people and kill people is peeker's advantage and just abusing the better weapon that you do have. Okay, and as I mentioned before, right, how some games are slow and you have to be patient, Peeker's Advantage is the thing that's going to give you the most kills in this game, right, that concept. And if Peeker's Advantage didn't exist in this game, if it wasn't effective at all, at all you probably wouldn't see any streamers dropping like crazy 40s, 50s, 60s, anything like that. They'd probably be getting like 20, 25 kills. Uh, so that is a huge thing in this game, right? Because if I'm going super fast, right? And somebody goes over here okay boom peter's advantage shoot him i have a faster weapon than him uh and on top of that guys i'm gonna i'm gonna show this right here too right so for you guys who've been watching uh my past few videos or the last video specifically i have been using the striker okay because they nerfed the uh, renetti and this gun has amazing speed right so just boosting around going left and right and last video i was just destroying cameras over and over and the striker doesn't have the best time to kill. It's not one of the fastest SMGs, but I was still able to kill people super fast and eliminate them quickly because I'm able to speed up really close to them just because the, the speed on this gun is ridiculous, right? So I'm going to go boom, kill somebody right here, go over here, 
kill him right there that i can just go super fast across the map and being that my peeker's advantage is so strong with this weapon because i'm moving fast i'm able to get a lot of kills with it okay so this is probably my favorite gun to use now when i'm going around rebirth because i get a huge boost forward and i can just pop up across the screen like this all right and you can dodge a lot of bullets that way so every single gunfight that you're uh that you're pushing when you want to get a lot of kills you want to make sure that you are just going as fast as you can and then make sure that when you're um when you're approaching the enemy too make sure your line of sight with them is like completely cut off and then as you surprise them you're just going to move super fast across their screen okay so that's one of the things that i really focus on when i'm trying to get like a lot of kills and pacing myself to get uh, a lot of high kills and rebirth and this works very well especially if they have bad weapons and i get this early in the game okay now, to also better explain this, I am going to start going over uh, one of the gameplays I have so that I can show you in-game on how I would just move fast, pace myself, make sure I'm going as fast as I can while not getting shot, and not slowing myself down to the point where I'm losing a lot of potential kills because I'm too slow in this game. Alright guys, so here I'm going to show uh, the demonstration of how I am pacing myself and moving uh, fast in this gameplay. So I did end up dropping 33 kills. I actually got this today. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to kind of describe what I'm doing here, right? So first I go to headquarters. I actually go there a lot. That's my number one spot when I do land. All right, so boom, got lucky enough, found the loadout crate. Like I said, okay, I found the best weapons that I possibly have. I'm going to push as many people as possible. So boom. Now, the reason why I even look in that direction, obviously people are landing, but as I said, you want to look for uh, places where people have the most probability, okay? And as you play Rebirth over and over, maybe like if you if you barely play Rebirth, right? If you're like a newer player, um, you're going to notice there's certain spots where people go all the time. Nobody landed headquarters, okay, the next easiest spot to check is prison. I'm not going to check factory because factory is near the edge of the map, and if I check prison, if no one's there, I can rotate to control. So you want to make sure that you're pushing areas that have the most probability of people. All right, so boom, I have the advantage over here. I can heal and go in the window because, as I said before, right, the cover-to-cover -cover thing, like I was just talking about that. Um, if I down this guy and then push forward, his teammates can possibly look over here and shoot me. So you want to go from cover to cover. Even if you want to go super fast, I can still go super fast in this direction and go and cover from the building instead of going out in the open. So down him here and I can heal at the same time. All right. Finished him. And then here too, I'm going to explain this little part, even though it's very minor. Uh... As I said, from going to cover, you don't always have to go like in the building. So here, okay, I'd be better protected if I went into uh, grandma's house right here, right? I'd be better protected. But um, being that I'm keeping this window close to me, if I ever get shot from any of his teammates, I can retreat back into this window, right? So here, I'm, I'm moving over here, but in my mind, I'm like, okay, if I get shot, I have this window I can jump to super quick, and they're not going to kill me fast enough because they most likely don't have amazing weapons. All right, so boom. Boom, see so you got right here. That was, uh, like, the wall blocked the aim assist, and I, I really tried to kill him. I just couldn't hit him right there. All right, so boom. Actually, I should explain that kill real quick, okay? So, I'm going to explain this kill real quick. Because remember, I just told you guys, right? Focus on Peeker's advantage. So, here I go. I shoot him. I'm just hitting the wall. So, I'm like, dude, like, he's he's getting the advantage over me. And right when he slid here, in my mind, I'm like, okay, the reason why he's going to kill me, even if I feel like I have great aim, is because he got Peeker's advantage, okay? Being that he boosted around this wall, now he can shoot me a little bit easier than I can shoot him. So what do I have to do? I have to reset my peeker's advantage, being that I have to leave and come back. So I leave, come back, and then he's he's a good player, right? He knows the same thing. So being that I left and come back, then he's like, okay, the fifth seal has peeker's advantage. So I'm going to leave and come back. So we're playing this game of Peeker's Advantage, and then the reason why I killed this player here is because I know he's going to go back again for Peeker's Advantage, but I'm using a head glitch. All right, this little thing is a mini head glitch that I can use, and that even though he got a first few shots off that he can kill me with, 
he's going to miss those shots because I'm knocking off his aim assist slightly with my head glitch. So head glitches beat Puker's advantage. All right, so boom, able to heal back. And then as soon as I can, I'm going to immediately push that same exact area. Right, so I'm looking for armor. I'm fully plated. High probability people are here. And then obviously you can look on the mini map to see where people are too so that you can immediately push them. Boom. And it's just speed too. Like you got to move as fast as you possibly can. All right, that guy, was, that guy was pretty good. That guy got me. But it's like, all right, so let's just say I die here, right? Boom, I died. I want to come back and still be on a roll to keep moving over and over and over, right? You don't want to slow down. The more you slow down, the harder it is to get a lot of kills. I'm going to land in a similar area where I just died, okay? This is something that people mess up with too as, as well with pacing, right? So they die, they lose their gun, and... In their mind, they're like, okay, well, if I go back to the same area, then the people are going to kill me because I have a bad weapon. So they pick a spot that's not common where nobody is. And now you're wasting more time looting and getting the perfect gun when you're not finding people. And that's another thing that messes up pacing. So a lot of times I go back to maybe the same area or a similar area that's next to it, get a gun real quick and go fight the guy. All right, so I died. I'm like, okay, I died. I'm just going to go kill this kid because I have a Renetti, and the Renetti has a fast time to kill, and I think with my movement, I can still take him. But if I find a better gun, which I actually remember I do because I found another loadout crate. Boop. Find another gun. All right, now I'm going to push him. Wait, get the other gun. Yep. So I'm healing, constantly moving. I hear him over here, so I want to make sure I time my slides right so that I'm caught moving forward and getting Peeker's advantage over him instead of being still in a spot where he can kill me. Nope. I don't I don't see him yet, so I'm moving. Oh, he's right there. And that's the same guy who killed me, right? That's the same guy who killed me. So going back to it again, what did I do? I timed my slide so that he stopped first. He stopped first, and as soon as he stopped, I was moving. So that gave me the advantage. Got him right there. And that is something that you guys will get used to over time, too, because uh, timing your slides is how you kill a lot of good players in this game. And you got to kind of predict when the enemy is going to slide so that you can counter their slide. All right, I made a video uh, maybe about a week ago where I talked about countering the slide cancel right so that is something over time where you're gonna have to predict when the enemy's gonna do it and then you time it in a perfect position where you counter that and that is very important that you have good headphones okay um if you guys didn't know too um if you are on pc make sure that you do play with pc speaker i found that to be absolutely amazing for headphones um and i think soundbar works really good for console okay so i highly suggest those because they they work very well for me All right. Over here, melee found an enemy. And this is why I said you should really like master the basics and the fundamentals too. Because right there, if I didn't have that drop shot, right? If I didn't know how to do the drop shot well, then I would have died right there and it would have messed up everything. So, boom. Right now, I'm at seven kills, eight kills, and I still have a minute 20 on the clock. I probably can't kill those people. Um, what I s we'll say about this, too, is, like, if you have really good weapons where you can beam people out the sky, that's easy kills. Uh, so, sometimes it's not, it's not going to ruin your pacing if you're trying to beam people out the sky. Uh, in this case... I didn't get anybody, so it was, like, a waste of, like, five seconds. Uh, but you do got to understand, like, who you can kill and who you can't kill. Because sometimes, like, right there, I was I was out in the open a little bit, and if somebody sniped me, I was dead. So, 
you'll get used to like knowing which times you should like challenge that but it is a little bit of a learning curve here i'm using a head glitch i really feel like people were up here because i heard something here got on the right downed and then i immediately see that a guy is behind me all right so the reason I push him like this is because I don't want him to have the head glitch advantage. So I'm going to push the head glitch before he gets there. Bam. I think there was another guy here. No, maybe not. Guy's above me. I'm waiting for him to drop. It would have beamed him out this guy. And that guy I do get to. So, so like I like I mentioned before, there's some people you can kill from distance, uh, and some people you can't. So just like make sure that uh, if you are gonna shoot somebody out of the air, that you are gonna 100 percent or or you think 100 percent that like okay, I'm definitely killing this guy. All right, you don't want to shoot at people who you're not gonna down because it's just a waste of time and they know where you're at. But those kills, I definitely had them. All right, now I'm at 11 kills. Uh, or was that gonna be 12 or 13? after this 12 and uh second circle just started right so what i do when i want to have really good games is i make sure that by the end of first circle i have around 10 kills if i have like four kills at the end of the first circle then that is a bad game for me because i'm starting too slow and maybe the lobby is just really good or i haven't been doing things that made me fast enough in this game okay um if you guys genuinely get like or you average like two or three kills by first circle uh then 10 might be too high for you so start to focus on getting around six kills after first circle and then once you get really good and you like knock that down then start upping that more and more so that you can have a really good start in this game okay but for me when i have like really good games that are 30 and higher i try to make sure that i have at least 10 kills or around there maybe like nine uh by the end of first circle actually i'm going to talk about that a little bit over here Okay, because I think this is very important for you guys to know too. Uh, there's people at control, right? I can go to control and kill those people, but I decide not to go there, right? Because those people, they look like they're really good. They're beaming that one guy over there and there's two teams over there. And what are my options here, right? I can like go onto the roof right here, maybe go to the right, but they're going to be shooting at me. And if I go to the roof right here, they might be shooting at me through the air if I go downwards, there's not much cover to where I can sneak in. And if I sneak in, they're probably going to have the high ground. So even though I can rotate there, it's not the smartest thing to do. Okay, there's not many spots for me to rotate. So I'm going to try to find a different spot to go to. All right, so I'm shooting. I, I can't do anything here. And then I start rotating this way. And then pop a UAV. Oh, okay, people are over here. So I'm going to use my high ground to actually go push those people. So whole team over here. I'm sitting at 13 kills, 25 people left. Downed. And I really wish I downed that guy. And then boom, I'm pushing this whole team. I have two little upgrades. Okay, so... Uh, this is a skill that you guys are going to have to develop over time and getting your pacing really well. I recommend every single person, even if you're like, you know, maybe around a 1KD player, like you're not the best, but you're still decent, playing solo quads. Okay, solo quads is really going to help determine uh, or better your skill when fighting full teams and helping you with changing your last known position. So when you're fighting a full-on team by yourself, you really need to focus on killing one person, then rotating to a new spot, then killing another person, then rotating to a new spot. And if two people are just sticking together the whole time and they're not moving, well, then you just got to keep rotating, rotating, rotating until you get an opening to kill one person. All right, so that's kind of what I did right here. All right, so I, I downed one, hit the other one. Now they're separated a little bit. Well, one guy has to climb up back up there to res, and they're kind of like panicking, right? So over here, I'm looking at them on the minimap. I see one guy's down there. This guy's down, and this guy looks like he's up top. All right, so I'm like, okay, they're all split. I got to just rush. 
Rush, this guy is by himself, so I need to focus on taking this guy out because he's next to me. I'm by himself. So I'm looking for him. I don't see him. There he goes. I hear him. The reason why I didn't chow that is because he had the advantage and I missed my uh, shot to actually kill him. So I'm going to rotate around. Boom. Like I said, too, if you keep rotating, you get openings just like that. So his other teammates like, okay, I'm going to help you out. And then boom, got him right there. Bam. Didn't finish him because I know his teammates are going to help him. And this part was really tough for me because there's a bomb drone somewhere. I think that bomb drone's still like active. So there, I, I downed a guy right there too. And then uh, you could do this as well. I do this sometimes, but when you are versing full teams, if you down somebody and run away, they're going to res, so you can use them as bait, okay? So if you're doing that, this helps you get more kills because you're using one guy who's down, that's one kill, using him as bait to attract the other guy. So if you kill both of them, then that's two kills, right? Uh, so you don't have to finish your kills all the time. Uh, but most of the time, you should finish them to get the extra UAV. But if there's a lot of people and you know generally where they're at, then you can use them as bait. That is another option. So did right here. Boom. And that bomb drone really messed me up right here. So I was... Oh, that was uh, really upsetting. All right, now I'm going to focus more on to the end game because uh, some of you guys may may say like, oh, okay, I'm getting that, like being super fast, picking rotations, right? Um, maybe like singling out people when you're when you're having like good pacing. But what about end game, right? I can do all that in the beginning because I have resurgence over and over and over. But what if I have one life and I can't respawn? What should I do then? And this is where I'm going to show that uh right here okay so rebirth is about to disable um i only have 22 kills right now and i do get a 33 so we're gonna see the pacing i have towards the end game all right so got right there All right, so uh, I know they're both down, and his teammate is up there. Oh, yeah, and there's no UAVs, which sucks. Like I said before, like a little bit earlier in this video, if you use the teammate as bait, then I... Uh, then you can draw the other person out. So I used him as bait, right? I left one alive so that he can be drawn out and then I can shoot him instead of him being at the tower. And then they're just like talking like, should I go res you? Yes, go res them so I can shoot you. Boop, drew him out too. And then that's how I killed the whole team right there. Now, another thing I want to talk about, too, when you are moving very fast in this game, um, and, and this does take risk, but you could see as I'm moving onto this entire team, my entire back is towards the lobby. Like, I'm out in the open, and if somebody just comes behind me, they can destroy me right here, right? I'm barely looking back there. I checked it a bit. And as I'm shooting this guy, I expose my whole back to this side of the map. Somebody coming from prison can kill me. Somebody coming near the tower can kill me. And I'm, I'm way out in the open like this. But the reason why I'm out in the open and my back is totally exposed is because there's not a high likelihood that people are there. If people were there, I would have found them already. They would have shot me, but they're not there. So being that they're there, I can kind of use uh, this, like the, the back of my body, right, as cover. Because that's cover that they're not in. 
All right, so nobody's right here, nobody's to the right, nobody's to the left, and I can kind of cone these people in and trap them in the gas. So, boom. And they, they, they can't do anything. They just have nowhere to go. All right, so focus, too, on, like, trapping people once it comes, like, towards the gas. You kind of want to, like, move fast. Don't slow down. Don't play super safe or, like, scared or anything. You want to move fast, but focus on trapping people, okay? The beginning portion is, you know, get to as many people as possible, use Peeker's advantage and kill them there. And then towards the end game, you want to focus more on trapping people and pushing them towards one side so that if their back is towards the gas, they have to run away, and then you can get shots off like that. All right. So, boom, taking over the roof. All right, so I'm going to stop right here. Now, again, analyzing the, the pacing and actually just getting more kills in the small circle. Uh, what do you guys think I should do, right? So I'm at top prison. There's space down here, space and control, and then this place is out in the open. What do you guys think would be the smart move to do? So what I end up doing, right, is being that I have the high ground because... I, I have the formula, right, with the three stages of a gunfight. High ground, head glitch, and then... You know, just use the peeker's advantage. Uh, so first, I'm going to capitalize the high ground and make sure I have that over other people. Okay, I do that for a bit. Um, I don't think I end up killing anybody. And then here is kind of scary because my high ground is going to run out. And if I jump down, I'm going to be on the same level. They're going to kill me, right? So uh, when you do jump off high ground, uh, make sure that you have places that you can be far away from enemies. So let's just say this spot right here, right? I know people are shooting in control. I know most likely they're going to be like over here or on the other side of the circle. So I want to solely focus on eliminating my area and make sure my area is clear so that I can start rotating towards the other people. Okay, so I'm going to show that right here. So I'm using all the high ground I can and I got to focus on anybody below me. Oh, got right there. Take him out. All right, most likely if I go over to here, there's going to be multiple teams fighting at me. So being that I already down this guy, I'm just going to risk it and jump down there. He's dead. People are going to be over there. The Boom, kill everybody right there. All right, so now I got all those kills and I was very aggressive and I still had like that element of surprise right there. Now we got another thing that I have to do, okay? So uh, I got to pick which place I'm going to pretty much rotate to. I can go out here and go to the right. I can go out here and go to the left or I can stay in the same spot. So boom, somebody pushes, he's dead. I just had to stay there because there's no other place to go. Um, and then here, uh, what did I say before, right? I said high ground, head glitch, and then Pika's advantage. So my goal right here would be to get high ground over other people because there's multiple teams fighting. There's two other teams and I'm by myself. Okay. So being that I picked up a gas mask, I can rotate back into the gas. Boom. So rotate back in. All the way up here. Killed that guy, so that's one team down, and then I did end up dying right here. That does suck. Um, with this too, maybe I could have went in the building. Like that's probably something I could have done differently. Uh, and it probably wouldn't have helped too much because he was already right there. So if I started healing, he'd still be able to get me. Um, but the smartest thing to do here is if I rotated left and would have eventually found him, I would have a little bit of high ground over other people. And then I could just like sw like uh, rotate to the side and curve like this over and over. All right. So that's just what I would do with this rotation. 
but uh it's unfortunate but that was like the whole uh 33 kill game that i wanted to show you guys uh for the most part because i wanted to make sure that you guys understand how i'm pacing myself in this game why i'm doing certain moves um how i'm able to like be so fast yet a smart player at the same time like i said two main things you want to focus on um is having a great weapon you want to make sure that you try your best to have your loadout at all times that's really going to help you out if not just like you know smg ar make sure you're good to go uh make sure you do have good rotations towards places as i explained with like not going to control that one time and then instead going backwards to fight that one team and then just analyzing the probability that people are going to be at certain places so like already being prepared when you're going to like top of prison or, or other places and just having that alertness ready so that you're able to go in kill people um and make sure that you're not in a spot where you are surprised all right and if you're using peeker's advantage a lot in the beginning and then making sure that uh you are closing people in towards the end of the game and making sure that they don't have too many spots to go in. That's going to be your two best things that is going to help you out to actually get more kills onto players um, while being fast and mobile at the same time. All right. So with uh, with that being said, too, that, that, that is pretty much everything I wanted to say in this video. Uh, but I do want to mention the spots, the common rotations that you should be taking um, when you do play Rebirth. OK, because the the, the better spots that you rotate towards, um, the better spots you pick, the better you're going to be at this game. Okay, so for me, I always land headquarters, but landing aside, let's just talk about like just rotating areas, right? So for my headquarters right here, uh, usually I would rotate straight to grandma's house, right? So if I'm in uh, grandpa's, I think it's called go to grandma's okay um you can rotate backwards you can rotate towards the tower like under there so you like swing this way this is like a good rotation just like swinging that way once you get here you want to swing into prison over here okay uh if you want to go to prison and then control center you do have to make uh a long distance run okay uh, that is going to be more risky so you do got to analyze the area before you go there and then go there and you don't want to like go there in hot times because if it's too hot, you can die really easily if you're getting shot in the open. All right. So that's really risky. But what I just showed you with headquarters, this is a super safe route. Okay. Once you're prison, you can rotate up to the roof. Uh, if too many people are on there, you do have to be careful. You might have to use the ladder. So there's like two rotations over there. Um, if you are on the roof, then you can start rotating towards like uh, this spot where it's like close to... Um, the bottom of the prison where like the those bathrooms are okay so like you can go from over here then go all the way across prison then there's like uh those little windows you can jump down and start rotating towards bottom prison because then you'll always have the high ground from there and then you can use that to rotate back upwards there's like a rappel thing over here uh, and that is a really good rotation that i do a lot um if you want to rotate from headquarters to factory this is also going to be just like a long jump over there and then you can zip up uh, or go straight downstairs to like fight people in the buy station right there so that's something i do a lot and then also the living quarters rotation so if you go from headquarters and parachute down make sure you you try your best not to get shot out in the air you can rotate towards through uh you can rotate through all of these buildings then go over here to these spots and use the tents as cover rotate all the way to control right there like that and then if you kill everybody there you can rotate back up to prison which is another like scary uh long distance run uh but it is going to connect you back to prison all right so um so those are like the the recovery areas where there's like spots where you're going to be open for like a little bit of time like here here maybe a little bit in factory there's certain spots where you are going to be out in the open and vulnerable but you really got to make sure that when you are in those positions, uh, you're making a good decision of not putting yourself in danger. So again, these are like safe, safe, safe. I want to rotate the factory. A little bit dangerous, then it's safe. Or if I'm safe, safe. A uh, little bit dangerous to living quarters. And then I should be safe all the way over here. And obviously when I mean safe, I don't mean that I'm not going to get shot or killed by other people. I just mean that I have more places to have cover to fall back on so that I don't die. And I can be super fast with the peekers advantage and not getting shot from other teams. Okay. So uh, that is everything I wanted to say about pacing. Um, and just having faster speed while playing smart in this game. I hope you guys uh, 
learned a lot and at, at least like opened your eyes to like more ways that you can actually be faster and better your um overall progress into getting higher kills and yeah uh join the discord if you haven't already i have coaching services there in case you guys are interested for that uh we're just connecting with people in the community and i am live on twitch.tv slash the underscore fifth underscore seal when i do stream all right so enjoy the video
Watch the skies. 